first line of defense. Recall that innate immunity forms the first line of defense and second line of defense. The function of first line of defense is to prevent pathogens from entering the body. We also saw that first line of defense is formed by skin and mucous membranes. Let us now find out more details about first line of defense. Skin Skin is the body organ with the greater surface area. And it provides the major barrier to pathogens. Skin consists of two parts. The outer part is known as epidermis and the deeper part is known as dermis. Epidermis is the outer thinner portion of the skin. Thus, it is in direct contact with the external environment. Epidermis consists of closely packed cells which are known as keratinocytes. Keratinocytes produce keratins which are insoluble proteins and resistance to bacterial enzymes and toxins. Thus, they provide defense against bacteria. Other than that, outer skin cells shed continuously. And this shedding removes microorganisms that adhere to the surface of the skin. Skin has low pH, which discourages growth of many microbes. Dermis. Dermis is the inner thicker portion of the skin which is composed of connective tissue. Dermis contain sebaceous or oil glands which produce oily substance known as sebum. This sebum contains unsaturated fatty acids which inhibit growth of certain bacteria and fungi. Dermis also contains sweat glands which produce perspiration. Perspiration flushes microbes from the surface of the skin. Perspiration also contains salt, antimicrobial peptides and lysozyme. Now all these are antimicrobial in action. For example, salt by its osmotic action withdraws water from the bacteria or microbe and this inhibits their growth and kills them. And lysozyme, we know that it is bactericidal in action since it breaks down their cell walls by attacking the peptidoglycan. So we saw that skin is a major barrier to pathogens. The contributing features are continuous shedding of the skin, its low pH, sebaceous glands which produce sebum, sweat glands which produce perspiration, all these features make skin a major barrier against pathogens. Now, let us see how mucous membranes contribute to first line of defense. Mucous membrane or mucosa is a membrane that lines various cavities in the body and surrounds internal organs. That means, it lines the respiratory, urinary, digestive and reproductive tracts. One important feature of mucous membranes is that the surface cells of mucous membranes are continuously shed and replaced by stem cells. This shedding process removes the attached microbes. Mucous membranes are moist. This is because they secrete a thick fluid known as mucus. The function of mucus is to lubricate and moisten the cavity surface. Besides that, this mucus also traps the pathogens and dirt which is expelled or eliminated by the body. Now, if we look at the upper respiratory tract of human body, nose contains mucus coated hairs. These mucus coated hairs trap and filter microbes from the air during inhalation. The mucus of the nose also contains lysozyme which is bactericidal in action. Other than that, mucous membrane of the upper respiratory tract contains cilia which are microscopic hair-like projections. These help to propel inhaled and trapped dust and microbes towards the throat. Sneezing and coughing are the reflexes 
which clear our respiratory system. If we look at the ear of human body, then there are two features which are a defense barrier to pathogens. These are hairs in the external ear and earwax or cerumen. Now, both these features prevent the entry of microbes inside the ear. Earwax is a mixture of secretions which are rich in fatty acids. Thus, they are responsible for the low pH of the ear. And this low pH inhibits the growth of many pathogenic microbes. Human eye. The lacrimal glands of the human eye secrete tears. These tears keep conjunctiva of the eye moist and this prevents the microbes from setting on the surface of eye. Tears also contains lysozyme which is antimicrobial in action. Saliva. Saliva is produced by salivary glands and they also contain antimicrobial substances such as lysozyme. Besides that, flow and washing action of saliva helps in checking the microbial colonization in the mouth. pH of saliva is in between 6.44 to 6.85 which is also inhibitory to microbial growth. Epiglottis. We all know epiglottis is a small lid of cartilage which covers larynx during swallowing. This prevents the entry of microbes in the lower respiratory tract. If we talk about the stomach of human body, then we know that stomach contains gastric juice. Now this gastric juice contains hydrochloric acid, enzymes such as pepsin and mucus. The pH of stomach is in between 1.2 to 3. The very high acidity of stomach is capable of destroying bacteria and most bacterial toxins. Urinary tract Now, urethra is cleaned by flow of urine. Urine contains lysozyme and it has acidic pH that is average 6. So these features inhibit microbes and their colonization in the urinary tract. Lastly, if we talk about reproductive tract, then in the female reproductive system, the vaginal secretions result in acidic pH, which is between 3 and 5. This pH is inhibitory for the growth of microbes. Other than that, menstrual flow cleans uterus and vagina. So to conclude, first line of defense is formed by skin and mucous membranes and they provide physical and chemical barriers to pathogens.